So waiting for the stream to go live. So let's also try to keep this session short. It'll take around, again around 10 to 20 minutes. So it's live now. You guys can hit the like button for this video. Welcome to Let's Crack Neat PG, the YouTube channel for an academy where you have the top educators, quality content, and you are assured a great learning experience. My name is Chaitanya Mittal. I am pursuing my MBBS from Ames, New Delhi, already Institute of Medical Sciences, right? And uh, we'll be discussing the types of joints and their subtypes along with examples. That's very, very important, right? So if nothing else, this video will give you at least what you need to know about the types of joints. And we are doing this as anatomy pearls. So we are trying to do short videos of a few high yield concepts, right? So this is part of Unacademy's YouTube festival. We have done six videos. You are at the seventh video for today. So let's start. Please download the Unacademy learning app and you can use my referral code Chatanya 10 to unlock the free plan, right? When you unlock the free plan, once you do that, you will be able to access all the free content. I'll tell you what it is in a bit, minute. And you have upcoming batches for the NEET PG examination. So we have started a morning and evening batch very recently. And if you feel you guys are late, it's no worries. You can watch the sessions as many times as you want. Just use the referral code SPCM and you will get a 10% off on your subscription, right? So an academy combat is what you have to register for. And uh, it's also a way to win free Unacademy Plus subscriptions and you can also win Amazon gift vouchers. We're having a combat on Sunday. So these are the top educators, few of the top educators who are teaching live on Unacademy and free live classes are being taken by a lot of educators here for you. So this is my Unacademy profile. You can go and check it out and you can see that there are so many classes that I've made, right? And then all the educators here, we're making plus courses for you. So you can see that you can enroll for these plus courses by taking a plus subscription. And uh, you can also take advantage of free mock tests here, right? And you can, this is an old screenshot, but mock tests are continuously updated here for you guys to attempt. And comprehensive syllabus coverage is provided. You can see that we have upcoming force courses at all times for every subject, right? There's usually a morning course and usually an evening course as well. So you can try and attempt those. So the easiest way to learn EPG online is an academy. The keyword for that is flexibility. It gives you the option of flexibility right so that's why you should go ahead with an academy and you have the robust chat feature here on the an academy app with interactive polls and the ability to learn wherever you want so just go ahead and install the an academy learning app so if you like it you can take the subscription there's a plus subscription and there's an iconic subscription in the iconic subscription you not only get the best of an academy but you also get entire everything that is there in prep ladder the video lectures of all 19 subjects all the question banks all the rapid revision courses along with printed notes along with your printed notes so unacademy plus versus unacademy iconic if you don't have prep ladder go with iconic otherwise take a plus subscription right so unacademy iconic one year plan is for 55000 you will use my referral code chatanya 10 you will get 10% off here right and if you take a two year plan you will use my referral code you will get another 10% off here and that can be your plan for a two year subscription right or plus, if you take the one year plan after discount, it is 24,750. And if you take the two year plan after discount, it is 36,000. Right? This is how you can apply it. And this is how you can redeem your credits. So let's start with joints. Let's start with joints. How to go about joints. Okay. Hi, Sadiq. Good evening. <clears throat> right. So now, what is the structural classification of joints is the first thing to know. Right? <clears throat> it's based on what is the structure that is present in the joints so there's fibro it's fibrous joint if it's having cartilage it's a cartilaginous joint and if there is synovial fluid it's a synovial joint very simple right so fibrous joints are bones that are joined by fibrous tissue and they are generally immovable joints so subtypes now we'll come to the subtypes the first subtype is the sutures the first subtype is the sutures they are the ones present in your cranium right so these are all the types of sutures if you ask me honestly you don't need to know each of these individual types right there's no need to know each of the individual types but you should just know that all these sutures or all the joints that are present in the head and neck, they're mostly, except the temporomandibular joint and a few more, they're all going to be sutures, especially between your large bones here, right? The interparietal, the temporoparietal, the parietal occipital, all of these are going to be sutures. Okay. One that you can remember is called as shin dialysis. Sometimes the question is asked, what is shin dialysis? 
So it's the joint between rostrum of sphenoid and alveolar of vomer. So it's a type of suture between them, right? Next, what is syndesmosis? These are basically interosseous ligaments. So these are fibrous joints where you have a ligament in between them or some tense membrane. So interosseous ligament, the example is inferior tibiofibular joint. Tense membrane, the example is posterior part of sacroiliac joint or the interosseous talcocalcanean ligament. So that's an example here for this. Hi, Gautam Kapoor. Good evening. Then gomphosis, the example is the teeth and the socket joints. Basically, where there's a, it's basically used for the teeth and the gum. Right? It's another fibrous joint and it's basically kind of a peg and a socket. Right? And then we talk about the cartilaginous joints. It's the second type of joints. So you have primary and secondary cartilaginous. Primary cartilaginous are called as thin chondrosis. Right? Thin chondrosis. And they are made up of hyaline cartilage. The important point is that they are made up of hyaline cartilage. Right? They are temporary and they are eventually replaced by thin ostosis. They are eventually replaced by thin ostosis. That is, they ossify. Right? The joints between ep epiphysis and diaphysis, that's an example of primary cartilaginous. Sphenooccipital, chondrosternal, first chondrosternal, this is very, very important to know. Costochondral, very, very important to know. Okay, so these two joints, please do remember. Ziphysternal is also done. Then secondary cartilaginous or joints known as symphysis. Symphysis, these are fibrocartilaginous joints and these are permanent, right? So it is said that all the joints in the median plane of the body, they are symphysis. So there is a symphysis here. So there is a joint here called as symphysis menti. This is not actually a symphysis. It is a misnomer. It is actually a symostosis because the bones are joined here, right? And these secondary cartilaginous joints, they usually occur in the median plane. They will allow some degree of movement. Example is your pubic symphysis, manobriosternal joint and intervertebral joint between the vertebral bodies. You can see all of these are spine joints. All of these are present in the midline of your body. All of these are midline joints. Type 3, synovial joints. So, synovial joints further, they have further categories. First is the plain synovial joints where the articulating surfaces are absolutely plain and they will allow you gliding movements. Example are intercarpal, intertarsal joints between articular processes of vertebra which are zygopophysis and the cricothyroid. So, these are synovial, plain synovial joints. There's a whole list. I'll tell you which ones to remember. Please remember interchondral joint. Okay. Here first remember intercarpal, intertarsal. Or zygapophysis and cricothyroid. Here you can remember interchondral, costovertebral, costotransverse, right? Acromioclavicular, carpometacarpal, except the first carpometacarpal, tarsometatarsal, intermetacarpal, intermetatarsal, chondrosternal, except the first chondrosternal, and sacroiliac joint. Okay, so basically all of these you have to remember. But see, once you study all these joints separately, it will be easy to memorize all of this. Right now it will seem like a lot of information to process. Okay. Then you can also divide the joints on the basis of their degree of mobility. Thin arthrosis are joints which have basically sutures which are immobile. Amphiarthrosis are slightly mobile. For example, the primary cartilaginous joints like symphysis. And diarthrosis are completely mobile. Example, synovial joints. Then there is another classification for joints. Simple, compound and complex. Simple joints are made up of two bones. They are made up of only two bones. Compound, they have more than two bones which are present in a single capsule. Example, the elbow or the wrist. And complex joints are ones that have a intra-articular disc in them. Example, there are two very important examples. The temporomandibular joint that is present here, right? And the sternoclavicular joint. Sternoclavicular joint, very important for your first mid-sem. Okay, first mid-sem or your first end-sem. They are generally asked in the internals because this is the first joint that you generally study. Sternoclavicular joint is a complex joint between two bones, right? So it is a simple complex. So you can have complex joints can be of two types. Depending on how many bones are there, they can either be simple, they can either be compound, right? So please remember that. The only criteria for a simple joint is that there should be two bones. Only criteria for a compound joint is that there should be more than two bones. And the only criteria for a complex joint is that there should be an intra-articular disc. So simple can also be complex, compound can also be complex, but simple cannot be compound, compound cannot be simple. Very, very simple. Okay. Simple compound complex. This is another classification that I've just put in in between. And then we were talking about uniaxial joints, right? So first we talked about plain synovial joints, which they don't really have an axis. They are only allowing gliding movements. Then we talked about uniaxial joints. Now we are talking about uniaxial joints. Uniaxial joints, they are, for example, hinge joints, right? Hinge joints. They're also called as ginge line, right? So they have one plane around a transverse axis. So like a Hinge, like the hinge of your door. So there is a transverse axis and that allows movement in only 
one axis. So example is your elbow, ankle and interphalangeal joint. Elbow, ankle and interphalangeal joint. Second example is pivot. It's also uniaxial, right? Also called as trochoid. And there's a one plane around the vertical axis. So difference between a uh, hinge and a uh, pivot is that if the one single plane is around the transverse axis, it's a hinge joint. If it's around the vertical axis, it's a pivot joint, right? For example, your median atlanto axial and the, so this movement is around the pivot joint and the superior and inferior radial nerve, your pronation and supination. Third joint is your biaxial. The third type is biaxial and in biaxial you have two further types, condylar joints also called as bicondylar. So the movement is mainly in one plane around a transverse axis, but partly also in another plane that is rotation around the vertical axis, right? So example is your knee joint and your temporomandibular joint. Very, very important classification of condylar. Okay? So if sometimes it is asked knee joint, is it uniaxial or biaxial? Please go ahead with biaxial. It's not a hinge joint. It's a condylar joint. Ellipsoid joints. See here, atlanto occipital joint, wrist joint and MCP joints. They have free movements around both axis and circumduction is possible. If you see the wrist joint, you have possibility of circumduction, right? Then multi-axial joints, you will have two types. First type is saddle joint, also called as cellar joints. And they are similar to ellipsoid, but they also have rotation possible. Example is your first metacarpal, uh, first metacarpophalangeal joint. Second, sternoclavicular, calcaneocuboid, incus malleolus, femur, patella, right? Then ball and socket joints, for example, your shoulder joint, hip joint, tallow calcaneo uh, navicular joint and incredo tipedial joint. So one question that is asked is, what is the type of joint of sternoclavicular joint? If it is asked that sternoclavicular joint, what is the type? So how you will describe it? First, you will say it is a simple joint. Why? Because it has two bones. Then you will say it is also complex. Why? Because it has an articular disc. Then you will say that it is a synovial joint, right? Then you will say it is multi-axial. Then you will say it is multi-axial. And finally, you will tell that it is a saddle type of joint. Right. So that is how you write the complete type subtype of joint. Okay. So that is how you will write about the sternoclavicular joint. Yeah. You can also mention that it is a diarthrosis, but that's mainly a classification as compared to a, something that you have to write here. Okay. So ball and socket, you know the examples. Then one thing I also want you to be familiar with is called as Hilton's law. And Hilton's law, it is a law that states that a motor nerve to the muscle acting on the joint tends to give a branch to the joint capsule and another branch to the skin covering the joint. Hilton's law, very, very important, states that a motor nerve to the muscle acting on a joint tends to give a branch, tends to give a branch to that joint capsule and another branch to the skin over that joint. Very, 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 very important. Yeah. So, Hilton's law, direct question is asked sometimes. Okay. Or he may state this line for you and ask you that this is the description of which law? Hilton's law. Okay, guys, that's about the types of joints. I hope this video was a good summary for you. All the best for your examination. Do hit the like button for this video. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also drop a comment after you have finished watching. watching. And the Telegram channel link you will find in the description. I have my own Telegram channel for PG. T.me slash unacademy need PG Chatanya, right? And this is my plus referral code Chatanya 10. It will give you an additional 10% off on an Unacademy Plus subscription that you take 10% off and do hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you so much guys for watching. So now I, if I give you a little bit of the idea of what I'm going to do today after this is this, right? So we're done with seven videos. Next class is at eight o'clock, uh, sorry, 7.45 p.m. Next link is at 7.45 p.m. And we'll be discussing how to study Forex. Then uh, at, I think at eight, 30 p.m. I think at 8.30 p.m. we have how to study general histology and after that we'll have an unacademy live quiz on 9.15 p.m. So please join me at 9.15 p.m. for this live quiz on unacademy, right? It is going to be on nerve muscle physiology. So it's something that you all guys have done. So please join me for this quiz on unacademy, right? And you please use my referral code Chetanya10 while unlocking a free plan. Okay. Take care.